Good morning. Yeah, let's connect with Jesus. Heavenly Father, we look to you. We thank you for this morning. Thank you for waking us up. Lord God, we look to you. Lord God, we need you every day, Lord. We pray that you would forgive us and cleanse us for any sins against you, Lord God, in ways that we've um, yeah, not loved you and one another. Empower us, Lord God, fill us with your Holy Spirit that will guide us into your truth, help us to not just know it, but to take it into our hearts and to live by your truth and let that truth set us free. Thank you, Lord. We look to you. We pray for your guidance today. Help us to follow you into life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, we are now in uh, John chapter 11. And I'll be, we'll be reading from verse 27 to, no, 28 through 37. 28 to 37. I'll be reading from the NIV version, but you're more than welcome to read from any other version. And yeah, the question we want to ask ourselves in the first reading is, what does this passage tell us about God? What does this passage tell us about God? So I'll read it first and then. Yeah, we'll reflect a little bit. And of course, if anything comes to mind, please feel free to write it in the comments. After she, Martha, had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Okay, so what does this passage tell us about God? Give us a minute to reflect on that. What does this passage tell us about God? What I see here, um, yeah, Jesus does kind of this puzzling thing. He, in verse 28, he tells Martha to go call her sister, right? And then in verse 30 it says now jesus had not yet entered the village but was still at the place where martha had met him so jesus 
he, he knows where Martha and Mary live. Uh, Mar Martha had gone out to meet him. But for some reason, he sends, instead of going to Martha and Mary's house, which would seem to make sense, he is, once again, he's, he hangs back. He stays where he is and ha basically has Mary come out to him. Yeah, I don't fully know why he does that, but again, there is this waiting where he hangs, he hangs back, um, and he, yeah, and he waits for Mary uh, to come out to him. He just stays where he is. Why would he do that? Could it be that he's waiting? for Mary to take that initiative. He's waiting for Mary to go out to meet him. Yeah, not, I mean, I guess, I guess he, he could have gone to her, but maybe in this way he, he would have imposed if he did that. Um, but there's something about him waiting that he wants us to initiate he he knows all that's going on he he calls for us um, but he doesn't like take us and drag us out uh, or just bust in on us he gives us an opportunity calls and we could choose we could choose to go out to him or not so Possibly, what does this tell us about God? Maybe this tells us that although God knows, he wants us to go to him of our own initiative. And when we're ready, but he wants us to go to him. What else do I see about God in this passage? I see um, Mary comes down and when Mary does come out to Jesus and when Jesus sees her weeping uh, and sees everyone else weeping, it says that he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. This is this, uh, I mean, just from surface value, we see that God has compassion. God has empathy. He sees the weeping, he sees the pain. And he's moved in his spirit. Now we don't have a God who is, who has no feelings. We don't have a God who is distant. Uh, is not able to enter into our suffering, but that he walks in, he responds, that he's moved, that he's emotional. He sees our pain and is not cold. He sees our pain and he's moved. There's also a interpretation that uh, it says that he was deeply moved in spirit and he was troubled. Why was he troubled? Like the, God already knows what's going on. He knows what he's going to do. Why was he troubled? Um, there's one interpretation that he sees the cause of their pain. What, what is the cause of their pain? Death. And one interpretation is that Jesus is so angry uh, the troubled word here being angry he's angry at death that this is not what god had intended he intended us for us to live he is the resurrection and the life and he's angry at death and what it does to people the pain that it brings and that was not god's intention but when we chose to go our own way this was, that was the result. 
So we see here possibly God doesn't want suffering and death. That's not what he wants. As a result of us going, turning our own way. And he is moved in spirit and troubled by what's going on. Have we thought about what does God think about this coronavirus? What does God think about people dying, um, people being unable to breathe? Don't you think God who made all of life is moved and troubled uh, by what is going on? He has a purpose for it, yeah, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't feel or doesn't care that he's moved. And we see in verse 35, the shortest uh, Bible verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Like, why did Jesus weep? Uh, he didn't need to weep. He knows that, oh, okay, he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. Like, he could have been like, hey, calm down. This isn't the end, right? I know what I'm going to do. But he weeps. Why does he weep? He doesn't have to. But he enters into our pain. Even though he knows there isn't any reason to weep, he weeps. He enters in fully to uh, what we experience, what we feel. And that's so amazing about our God that our God weeps. Yeah, it shows he could enter into and step into whatever we, we are experiencing and he could be present there. He doesn't shoo away our feelings, he allows us in his presence to just put it all out there. And even if we're wrong, even if we don't see, uh, he allows us that space and he enters in with us. He sees and he, he enters in and responds, uh, understands and weeps with us. What a what a beautiful picture of God. I, I think that's just so amazing. So what does this passage tell us about people? What does this passage tell us about people? Give us a minute with that. And if anything comes to mind, please feel free to write it in the comments. What does this passage tell us about people? What does this passage tell us about people? One, I, I see it's so interesting to uh, compare Mary, uh, Mary and Martha. They're so different. They're from the same family. Jesus loves them both. But it's interesting when you compare and contrast Martha and Mary's response. You see, when they here they both hear that jesus is coming their beloved friend uh is finally coming the one that they sent for 
uh, because they wanted him there because uh, their brother whom Jesus also loved was sick. So they sent word for him and here he comes and word comes that he's coming and Martha goes out to meet him. But Mary, it says, stays where she is at home. Why does she do that? Then we see possibly why. Now Jesus specifically is asking for Mary and realizes Mary didn't come out. There's something going on for Mary. And then in verse 32, it says, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, period. Right, Martha comes out collected. She starts with the same thing. She says, Lord, right, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but, I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. There's a complaint, but there's hope. But right here uh, in verse 32, Mary just, she can't, she's not, she doesn't have it together. She's falling at Jesus' feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It is an accusation, it is pain, it is a, a question that lingers right there. And yeah, what does that tell us about people? We respond to uh, tragedy in different ways. There's no right response. Um, and I see that things that happen, um, they, they can hurt us and obviously and we could become bitter at God. We could become angry at God. Uh, who else who's been through uh, stuff? We say, God, where are you? God, why didn't you answer my prayer? Right? God, why didn't you come earlier? Why did this have to happen? What does that tell us about people? We're limited and we get angry at God and we have questions. We don't understand why certain things happen. But I think it's so beautiful that uh, Jesus could have rebuked her right here and says, hey, look, there's a purpose for that. I'm going to raise your brothers. He, he doesn't say any of that. Do you notice? Yeah, he doesn't rebuke her. He allows her space to grieve. This is lament. And this is something we have lost uh, as Americans. We, we like the Jesus who brings victory. We like the Jesus who right, is about winning. But what if we've lost? What if there's death? What if we're disappointed? That we as people, we have the freedom to be able to lament. Lament is an old word, but it's not just coming to God with praise. Uh, or Martha does with hope. But sometimes we are in such pain, we come to God with our complaints, with our pain, and that's it. And we don't know where, where questions hang. To Jesus, that's okay. There is space for that. Jesus weeps with us before we have the answers. Um, that's something that we need to be able to enter into and we can enter into that Jesus gives us permission to enter into that when we go out to Jesus, like we mentioned before, yes, he wants us to go out to him, but we don't have to be put together when we go out to him. We could just collapse at his feet and just be raw with Jesus. Some of us need to do that. 
Some of us will not have the breakthrough uh, unless we do that. Because uh, if we wait for us to get to be all together, like, are we ever going to go to Jesus? Are we ever going to be put together or not? And we might not have the answers, but we still need to go to Jesus. And as a friend once taught me, uh, it is better to be angry with Jesus than to be angry apart from Jesus. Let's enter into his presence and bring our lament before him and know that, yeah, we don't have a God who will only have us come to him if we're going to praise him and only wants us to come to him if we have good news. Uh, but we have a God who invites us in, in all our honest, in all our questions, even accusations, even we could be wrong, but he invites us and he wants to see us. He wants to interact with us and be with us in that. And in due time, take us through that. Yeah. So third question is who can, who can we share this with? Yeah. Who can we share this with? Yeah, as, as, as you see, uh, um, people will mock us, right? But that doesn't matter. And Jesus is not veered off course of that. People may not understand, and that's okay. Uh, but we go to Jesus anyways. All right? And there's people who are haters who don't understand. Um, let, let them say what they're going to say. But we're going to go with Jesus. So who can we share this with? Who needs this encouragement, this word? Maybe who needs for you to just be there to listen and, and to weep with them, be present to their pain? I've learned so much from uh, being in this community on the east side, from my working class uh, Latino brothers and sisters, man. They have taught me the ministry of presence. They have taught me how to be present to people in, in their pain. And they have been present for me in my pain. Uh, or those of us, uh, I'm coming from a middle-class background, maybe we want to be more put together. Um, that, that's so awkward, that's so hard for us. But uh, for folks who have experienced oppression and pain, like. They don't have that option always. So they know how to be present uh, in pain and to receive from the Lord in that. So yeah, who could we share this with? Who could we be with, uh, be present to? And yeah, let me pray for us. Well, oh my, <laughs> I moved right to the fourth question. The third question is how does God want us to Obey this word. So I'll give us a minute on that. How does God want us to obey this word? Yeah, I'm challenged to come to God uh, just real with the questions, with the deep pain, with the hurts. Uh, I need to go to him in that space. Uh, I want to invite you all. Our church is doing a seven-day fast uh, starting today to seek God for breakthrough. Seven days as uh, one of the elders in our church got a vision of just the Israelites walking around the city of Jericho, a stronghold to conquer Jericho. They walked around seven, uh, seven days, and on the seventh day, they shouted and the walls came down. So, man, Lord knows we need some breakthrough, especially in this COVID uh, time. Uh, it's unprecedented time. Uh, 
the church, God is inviting us. Are we going to cry out to him? Are we going to go to him? Or are we just going to stay where we are and, and, and stay stuck in our heads? But rather, let's cry out to him. Let's cry out to him for healing, for breakthrough, uh, for transformation. So you can fast from whatever you want to, whatever you need to, um, whatever it is that it'll that you could feel it with his absence so that you could press into prayer. So I invite you into that. And that's an opportunity for us to go to God. Uh, yeah, with everything and see his breakthrough. So let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, look to you. We thank you for being present to us, that you are God who's not unable to understand uh, what we go through. For you have walked in to our mess and you're present to us. Thank you, God, that you are compassionate, God. And though we may not know what you're doing, we know that you are doing something. So we give ourselves to you and I pray that you would help us to be able to enter in and go to you however we are. Not waiting for ourselves to be put together, but go to you however we are. And in your presence, find life, find healing. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Take care.